telling of, of where they were and how they stayed up for a few race and people were on holiday and how they found a little TV that was flicking away in the corner and they had to watch it and uh, it's just it's special hearing their stories about about how they, they sort of battle against the odds to, to watch our race which is really quite good. Very great talking a little earlier we saw James Cracknell down on the water as well the one member of the four who's sitting it out is Tim Foster uh, but a tremendous buzz about the place today. Yeah it's been fantastic I mean what's essentially for a rowing event it, it, it's great there's so many people have come down here they're here to celebrate they're here to, to cheer people on and uh, it's just a whole whole new thing for rowing itself. Okay you're going to watch it with us Tim but let's learn a little bit more about the competition now from Dan Topolsky and Gary Herbert. Right, and uh, we, we're over a distance of 350 meters here. It's going to be sprint stuff, explosive stuff. And then we have uh, entries from seven nations, with Britain making up a second team as Britain 2. Here's the British team, the men's pairs, Breakwave and Pinsent, Olympic champions as we all know from uh, this year, from Sydney. But it's a welcome back because they're Olympic champions in the pairs event back in 96. James Cracknell in the single skull, Batten and Lindsay, silver medalists from the women's quad. Well, they're back in the women's doubles. They were world champions two years ago. So a good lineup for Great Britain 1. Great Britain 2 there, men's pairs, Dennis and Hunt Davis. Well, we'll remember them from the men's eight. A thrilling race they gave us, the climax of the Olympic regatta. And alongside them, men's single skulls there, Andrew and Lindsay. He was also in the Olympic eight. And the women's doubles, double two, uh, Francis Houghton and uh, Helen Fenelou. She Houghton was uh, in the double skull back in Sydney. So that's Great Britain 2. It's a strong team for the uh, Great Britain team. And this is how it works. It's got race heats. We've got two heats for each class of boats and first and second through to the final. And they're the points for the races, the individual races. Four points for a win through to uh, one point for fourth place. And the exciting race at the end of uh, all of this is the relay race. And there we have the points there. Eight points for the first place down to uh, two points for four. And the cumulative points will uh, tell us who is the best team on the day here at uh, Dorney Lake on Eaton. So Great Britain is the first boat. Redgrave and Pinson, they're really receiving a fantastic applause there. Look at that. So it's a welcome home today, this regatta for this pair. And for uh, Steve Redgrave there, look at that. These boys, though, they're in heat number two. We've got heat one starting first at two o'clock, and these boys will be doing heat number two. And look at that. What a welcome there. It's a fantastic turnout. The people have been coming in all morning to see this. People have been following the, uh, the athletes from the British team who came back with their gold medals. They've been following them around, trying to get autographs. People screwing around the block to get those autographs. It's been an amazing atmosphere here. And we watched it out there in Sydney and we watched the fantastic race and the atmosphere was brilliant but there were so many millions back home here and today is for them really isn't it? It's for all the people from the surrounding sides. People have come far and wide in the rowing world to see these guys because they didn't get the trip out to Sydney and it's their chance just to say well done and, and they've been so receptive this morning. They've gone up to people, they've talked to people, they've been signing autographs and rightly so because this man Stephen Redgrave, greatly assisted by uh, Matthew Pinson, have put rowing on the map. The two guys, remember, they were gold medalists in Atlanta four years ago. They haven't really been in the pair much uh, since then, but they're here in this pair, the two great British rowers from that great gold medal four that won the gold medal in Sydney. So but that's in a few minutes' time. First up is heat number one in the international men's pairs. Denmark will be in lane one, Netherlands, Russia and Great Britain in lane four. They're closest to us there. Simon Dennis and Ben Hunt Davis. There's one. There's uh, Ben Mark in lane one. They're under starters' orders. A little bit of freeze here. Russia. It'll be a reasonably quick start. They're all sitting forwards. They're under starters' orders. Great Britain there in lane four. They're off there. A dodgy first straight there from Great Britain one. But it's power stop here now. It's 300 metres. Explosive. High rate. Power on the legs. Really fine racing. This is a lot of strokes in per minute. They've got to get up to around 45 or 50 strokes a minute, but they, what they have to do is to make sure that their technique is good. And at the moment, it does look very much like it's the Netherlands who are just out in front with Great Britain 2. Uh, two men from the British 8 sitting in second place. Coming up to the halfway mark already. That's how quick and fast this race is. Netherlands up there in lane 2 pushing on now, but Great Britain starting to come into their stride, pushing on hard on about 44, 45 strokes per minute. There's Great Britain closest to us, close up there. Up on the top of the picture is Netherlands in lane number two, 75 metres remain. The British pair there, they're 
just losing a little bit of a, of a finish there on the left on the left side. But they are actually rowing. Now beginning to build it up. The Dutch still at 46 strokes a minute, but the British really beginning to move. 20 strokes and that 20 meters up to the line and now and it's going to be a close one there it's going to be on the line look at that one stroke there and the boys have shown form Simon Dennis and Ben Hunt Davis for great bracing there and it was it was touch and go in the first half of that race but they timed it to perfection in that last 20 meters they took it off very steadily actually they were about 38 39 strokes a minute in the body of that of that race and then really piled on the pressure in the last 200 meters uh, the Dutch were up at 46 most of the way 46 strokes a minute most of the way but it was just on that last stroke, I think, that the British got through. Just looking now at the replay there as we come up to the line. There is nothing in it there between these two crews. And just to tell you, Netherlands, uh, Dietrich Simon, there he was an Olympic champion in the men's eight back in Atlanta in 96. So good form there in that pair. But it's a confirmation there. Win for Great Britain, two. Netherlands, second. Those two crews go through to the final. They play in three. And Great Britain will be closest to us in lane four. There's confirmation of the line up there. And they're just waiting now for Germany to get on to the start. The Germans are the uh, junior gold medalists uh, this year. Um, so they've been together for, for a while, but they are juniors and they'll find this going pretty hot under the foot. Looking at the USA there in lane two. There they've just come over a few days now over in the country. It's just climatizing to slightly different weather than from, uh, from Sydney. Everybody using the boats made here in, in Britain by Ailing, very good. Yeah, the boats that actually are uh, used by, uh, by the British team at the Olympics. Looking at Germany now, going back onto lane one, so once they're on the uh, state boats, will be away. The state boat boys there, just on the left-hand side, all from Windsor Boys School. Richard Hammers there, chief of rowing there. They're supplying the boys, doing a sterling job for this regatta. Great Britain in at lane four. They're all under starters' orders now, they'll be away in a matter of seconds. Norway, TV1. The two men's international pairs underway now, Great Britain. The roar of the crowd goes up for these boys here. Great Britain won, Steve Redgrave and Matthew Pinson blasting off the start at a magnificent 50 strokes per minute. They're really taking this race on. This is their style, this is the way they like to go. And the power in these two athletes is enormous. They certainly outpower everybody else in the field. The question is technique, and here they are back in a boat that they haven't been in for some time. They've been rowing in the four, now here they are in the pair racing the Sydney Olympic silver medalists. Now already we're just looking there to come through the halfway mark. Great Britain lead by about three or four feet, extending it out now to half a length on 47 strokes per minute. That shows you the explosive nature of this event here. There's no time for mistakes, no time to think. You've got to go out hard and you've got to drive it on. But watch out for USA up in lane number two. Because now the Americans are starting to push back with about 50 meters to go. Low states were at 40 strokes a minute, but I think it's the British just on the end there. They're just there in front as they come up to the line. On the line now, Great Britain hold it high, canvas by about five or six feet there. And what a race there. And you know, it's the form of these boys, because the Olympic champions, they haven't been in the pair competitively for four years now. They've been concentrating on the cops of the sport. So that, don't they have style? Don't they have just and that power. panache? And power. But he took it off there 50, over 50 strokes a minute. Uh, the Americans had no answer for that. They were coming towards the end there. But in that, in that race there, my God, that power really showed through. That was tremendous rowing from Stephen Matthew. And look, at, look at the effort that they put in here. They're coming up to the line. They're just a little look around to the right just to make sure. Because they know that the Americans are there and they're strong and they're powerful. And relief. Just a little bit of relief there because they've been slightly concerned that Obviously, they wanted to keep the name going and the reputation going. Remember, they've got to go right back down to the start now because the final will get raced almost immediately. The, uh, the, the rest of the, the races are over. So they're going to be right back down to the start and racing that again. The back after Sydney. What have the last couple of weeks been like in that respect? Um, the back's been good. There have been no ill effects for the racing or the uh, the travelling. Um, so essentially, at the moment, I've got a healthy back. But the thing I do need to check up on is whether I'm doing some damage that I don't know about yet. It'd be nice to, to get a scan and to check the pictures and, and just to make sure I'm I'm, I'm not putting kind of my uh, general health under under pressure. But if that's not going to stop me, then I want to do the same again in four years. So the whole thing's been fantastic. The reaction and reception has been fantastic, and I want to be a part of. 
have that again if I possibly can. And everyone has been saying that the, uh, the reaction and the reception has been beyond even their wildest imagination. Yes, I mean, we were asking around in, uh, out in Australia that uh, did we know the reaction back home, and uh, we assumed we did, but... I mean, since we've come back, and the amount of people who stayed up and watched the television, they were shouting, waking up the neighbours, the people who have come up to us and said, well done, we've been recognised in the street, we've been signing autographs, it's just been fantastic, and it's been, I mean, 10, 100 times better than I ever imagined. I've dreamt of crossing the line or the medal ceremony, but everything on top of that has, has just been superb. A wonderful crowd here, I think you're required to sign a few more autographs. Just say to Norway in three, and Great Britain's Miriam Batten and Gillian Lindsay, there they are, from Great Britain, in lane four, 43 and a half strokes, really taking this race on and they have to. It's all about leg work, about power, about drive. No time really to make any mistakes at all. They've just got to get it right, they've got to make sure the technique is right, so they're moving the boats along as well. But it's all high strokes a minute. And it's the British who are just out in front. Great Britain just leading the silver medalist in the quadruple skulls from Sydney. Great Britain were the world champions two years ago, back in 98 in this event. And they're being pushed though by Germany up there in lane at number one, the under 23 gold medalist from this year's under 23 world championships. There's Miriam to the right of the pitcher, just urging on uh, Julian Lindsay in the stroke seat now. As Great Britain just got to edge out a little bit more, about three quarters of the length, half the length is perhaps three quarters as we come up to 50 metres remaining in the swimming heat to the international double skulls. A great performance, and the crowd are really loving this. It really is just a treat, a real festival of rowing here in Stirling this afternoon. A win there for Great Britain, Miriam Batten and Gillian Lindsay. Safety through to the final, and there's always just a sense of relief here because it's their first time back on the water down from the Olympics. Absolutely, and it's so also so difficult to change to do from uh, from rowing 2,000 meter difficult stuff to do. There's confirmation, Great Britain won safely through to the main final and the crowd are really urging our boys on because we've got Great Britain's Andrew Lindsay in lane one and we've got Great Britain's James Pratt closest to us there in lane number four. In between Norway, Beckham and Denmark in lane three. And a real treat now for these uh, Seagull Scholars. Certainly Beckham and uh, Kelly Sam are, are very, very experienced scholars. Uh, Andrew Lindsay, we've got him there now, he's up at 40 strokes a minute. He's been rowing in the eight, very difficult to transfer from the rowing boat, the eights, to the sculling. James Blackwell has experience too, but he's also been rowing in the four. It's these two experienced scholars in the middle who are taking the lead. Roy's almost through now, we're through halfway, and James Blackwell is it's a race on really between James and Andrew Lindsay for a uh, second and uh, fourth place. But James has not given up really on that second place. He's pushing hard on Norway Beckham as they've got 75 metres now remaining. Beckham now starting to push on. Andrew Lindsay up there in lane at number one, fading out to back three. He had a magnificent heat to qualify for this final. But out front now, it's Denmark and it's Beckham. It's Denmark and it's Beckham. It's on the line and through is Denmark. Right on the line there. Denmark through from Beckham from Norway. Germany. In Sydney. Russia in lane three, bronze medal. Attention. From the women's quadruple skulls. Go! And they're away and it's a uh, score to settle now for Russia in lane three and Great Britain in lane two. Top of the picture, the silver medalists in the women's double skulls in lane one from Netherlands. And Germany will be in lane four when they side on in the cross, the course here. But eyes really, middle of the picture, Great Britain against Russia. Yeah, but the Netherlands there, this is their event. They were silver medalists in this event and uh, they are old rivals with the British double who uh, they raced against two years ago when Great Britain, this double, won the gold medal at the World Championships. But they are doing well. They are right out there. They are doing, they're, they're, they've just got the edge there on the Netherlands and Russia just being squeezed. There's the Russians now moving. The Russians moving up all the time. Kurt Dover, the world champion two years ago, moving up in front of the stroke seat. Over 100 metres to go now in this final. We're in trouble. Skulls now and Russia are ploughing off. 45 strokes per minute. They've really taken the race on to the silver medal from the Netherlands. Up there in lane one. And the Olympic silver medal from the Women's Cup of the Skulls. Great Britain trading in behind. It's going to be a push on there for the second place for Great Britain. But on the line, Russia have settled the score. And the Russians, who were bronze medalists in Sydney only three weeks ago, well, they have 
saying they're first today and they've put a red wave in Pinson from Great Britain 1 in lane of 2. We're ready, we're about to start. And they're away, it's 350 meters of the most explosive racing and wearing you will see since Sydney. And there are boys now powering off. Red wave to the right, Pinson to the left. Up at 49 straight per minute. And Ben Hunt Davis from Great Britain 2 in lane 3 has pulled a whopping crab there. He caught the play there, he slowed the British boys down. And but Great Britain are away in fast. They're moving well, but it's uh, on this side. This is a big crew, the big red silver medalist in Sydney, United States. They are moving very well indeed. Great Britain 2 have got back, but it's now between Great Britain and Princeton, Atlantic gold medalist, and the American silver medalist from Sydney. Powering it's about 125 metres remaining of this 350 foot. Now we're going to have to see the explosion from Red Wave and Princeton. Now let's see how you're fast and you're fast. Here's the call from Reynolds. Calling on Steve, calling on Matthew, pushing it hard. Oh, and America has caught a big crowd there. The Americans had it in the bag, but the pressure got to them. And the power of Great Britain, the Red Wave and Princeton, they take it on the line there. And that's a great result for Great Britain, but it was close and it was fortunate down because America, for three quarters of the race, they had it. It, it, was, it was close. I think from our angle here, it, was, it, was, uh, it looked as if the Americans were up. I think they were very, very close with the United States. Uh, first, USA, the silver medalist from uh, Sydney came second. And our boys from the Olympic 8, the gold medalists from the Olympic 8, well, they can only manage fourth today. That's not the, well, this is the standing. Great Britain lead, but only marginally eight points to Great Britain. Netherlands in second place with five. But everything can change because Denmark is to Germany in the lane of three. But let's look at lane four. Great Britain won the Great Britain top team. There's James Bracknell now in the first 10 or 15 strokes. Really happy to push it on. He only managed a third place in the individual and international side down in places earlier racing and now he's looking to turn that all around. He's such a powerful athlete, he's uh, up there now waiting 40 strokes uh, a minute. He's a powerful, powerful athlete, but remember he's had to change from rowing in the four to sculling here. He's got experience in the skull, but uh, not for some time now. So here he is in that sculling boat and he's doing very well indeed as they come up to halfway. He's got to be, he's trying to put his, uh, his relay team up there in lead position and he's doing very well indeed. Phenomenal shot there as we see three scholars just pretty much stroke for stroke. There's nothing in it now as we come into the last 50 meters now before the change over here and the crowd are going historic here for Great Britain because James Franklin is having a great skull here in lane four. He's up in second place. He's pushing on Denmark in the lane at number two as a quick change. And look at the change there because Great Britain number one in lane four are away and fast. Lindsay and Batten. And they're just going to, they've got the style and the panache really to push on Denmark in lane number two. But Denmark have got the first start, but Britain got the second start, and Germany now, they're in lane number three, trailing behind. Two, two years ago, Great Britain were the world champions, gold medalists uh, in this event. Then they went into the quadruple skulls, and that's where they got their silver medal in Sydney just now. Here they are, they're now trying to row down Denmark who haven't got quite the same, the same uh, uh, quality, but they certainly had a, a two-length start in this race. Now, the Great Britain girls here, they will hand over to the big men of Red Wave and Pinson, so they'll be looking to do as much as they can to track down Denmark in lane number two, because the handover is going to be explosive, because Steve and Matt will not want to wait on the start for too long. And Great Britain here in the women's double skulls, the international category, are pushing on hard against Russia and against Denmark. The Russians are coming strong. Great Britain are powering through. It's going to be first for Great Britain on this line. The handover is going to be for Stephen Matthew. And now Stephen Matthew is going to push. Come on, boys, let's go. Let's push. A little bit late there. We're first over the line with the double skull. Now let's see. There might have been a bit of confusion there, Dan, on that. That was a very poor change over there. They didn't really hear the, uh, hear the word because Great Britain finished the double in first position and they were the, uh, the third crew to go off. Steve taking a quick look around there just to see where the other two are. He knows what they've got to do. But they're up at 44 strokes a minute. And Russia up in lane number one have really taken it on. They're very cheeky to jump the start there because Great Britain had the better changeover. And now we're going to see the power of the Olympic champions there. They're closest to us in the box. They're on 43 strokes per minute and they are tracking the Russians over there. Little look right from Regway from the Olympic champion. He knows where they're going to power through and push through. And the crowd are going absolutely bizarre and wild because Great Britain are now pushing. Here comes Steve. Here comes Matt now. They know they've got the better of Russia. We've got 50 meters remaining. And 
and it will be great Britain, the awesome power, the awesome display of the Olympic champions while well, they dominated there and it's a comfortable world. Well, it'll look right now to the crowd and a phenomenal result then. A very great result for the boys. Good result, puts them in the final and uh, that's where it all counts. But that was a very good uh, uh, relay leg for them. The skulls, the women's double skulls and concluding with the men's pairs, the heavyweight pairs. James and the international relay final is away now with James Cracknell for Great Britain in lane number two as he has that familiar power in the legs and he's just holding breath stop, pumping the legs and powering off down. He's a phenomenal skull. Oh, he is. He's up at 44 strokes a minute. That's really high. He's got to stay there because this is all about sprinting. It's all about doing all of this in one minute. It's going to be very heavy on the legs. You can see how he's pumping those legs. Coming up to the halfway mark now, if you just imagine a 2,000 meter Olympic final being squashed into 350 meters, that's the pressure, that's the kind of commitment that they need here. It's real stroke for stroke stuff here, and Great Britain's change panel going very, very well. The next quarter, him, Norway, Beckham, the silver medal for men's double star, which in the is challenging him now as they come into the last 75 meters. But what he's trying to do here is set up the double stars for the women's double stars who will come in the next leg. He's trying to set them up with a good position here. And is he doing well? He's up there with Beckham. He's second with his son from Norway, but he's really doing a good job there for the British team. Now we're coming up to the cross over here. It's about two or three feet now in between it, and uh, the flags go down on the start. And away goes uh, the Great Britain double of Batten the right and Gillian Lindsay to the left of your pitch. And that was a good changeover there from James Cracknell. Where now they're pushing on because it's Norway and it's Great Britain. Those two at the moment. Now this double skull, this race, will set up the final leg for the men's heavyweight pairs for Stephen Matthew coming down. So again, pressure on Great Britain in this particular leg. With Batten and Lindsay who are out of the uh, silver medal quadruple skulls in Sydney three weeks ago. They got that silver medal. Here they are moving really, really well indeed. We just had a shot of the crowd there. I mean, he's, they've all had just such a reception here. It's a real sort of welcome party, a welcome home back for our Olympic rowers. 44 strokes now at Great Britain around. They're really pushing hard there. They've got the um, Netherlands, the world champions themselves, a few years back. And in lane at number four, the Russia are powering it on surface to us. On the side on, we can see the Russians pushing back. But Great Britain have had a phenomenal second part of this leg now. And they're sending it all well because the next changeover will be for Steve and Matthew and they'll want to come off the start in first place but at the moment over the line Great Britain and Russia and there we go here we go the crowd now Dan I'm really looking forward to this race alright Steve no traps make sure it's a clean clear wonderful race and look at the power there this is probably his last international race quick look across to see where they are and there is the power he's calling it all the time it's such fast stuff this it's really fast stuff very exciting work you can see the excitement on Steve's face there really Really rising to the crowd here. Good side on caption there in the picture. We can see the speed, 43 strokes per minute. That is a blistering pace here, really. If you think in an Olympic final, they settle down at 34, 35 strokes per minute. And they are just pushing away now. But Norway in lane three coming off. Russia in lane four. Slightly fading a bit, but the crowd are cheering their Olympic champions home because it's about 75 meters remaining now in this final of the international relay. And the boys have not let their supporters down. And the crowd are going absolutely berserk because on 47 straight per minute, Great Britain are walking away from this international field. And there we have it, over the line. And Steve has won, and Matthew, and smiles all round. And are we seeing, will that be the last international race? Well, I didn't see him smiling like that at Sydney after they won the gold medal there. I've never seen him looking so happy. I think that is definitely his last international race. That's it for him, and that is a great way to sign off. Phenomenal there. We saw, we didn't see that kind of emotion at Penrith Lakes three weeks ago. I mean, it's a different setup there. But it was so special for these guys, and especially for Steve, who this is, it's his brainchild. He's behind all this super sprint wearing here, this Grand Prix stuff. It's been a great welcome back for the British team here, but it's been a fantastic welcome back for Stephen Wigray. And if it is the last time we see him down, he's looking good. He's, he's looking, looking good, good, he's looking good, and then. Matthew, Steve, well, and Steve, how satisfying was that? Oh, that was very enjoyable indeed. It was really down to James and the girls. If we get a start, if we're up at the last leg to go, there's nobody that's going to overtake us. So James has just done a tremendous uh, job. He's just coming in now, 
James, come and join us. <laughs> He's dedicated this entire victory to your <laughs> It was it has been hard jumping in, but I did a bit of practice on all these fellas, you know. Committed athlete here. Uh, <laughs> paid off in the last one, I got there as the races went on. Is this what we might describe as the perfect end to a perfect season? I think you could say that. Uh, we we yeah, slipped back in the middle in Lucerne, yeah. <laughs> that, that'll be motivation for, uh, for something in life, whether it's rowing or... Uh, or anything else, we'll know that we, yeah, you, you can't win them all the time, but as long as you win the ones that matter, then it's great. And Steve, an overall view of the day and the reception that the crowd here has given, not only yourself, but the whole of British rowing. Absolutely amazing. We thought they might start drifting away, but now they're coming around for the, for the prizes. The girls have just done tremendous as well. James did really well in the single. The girls gave us the lead. And you finished it off. We finished it off. Well and truly. And we're finished off. Okay. <laughs> Miriam, you probably felt you had to give these old fellows a bit of a lead. Oh uh, well, the fantastic thing was like they, they counted it down and it went three, two, and Gillian thought they were going to say one, and then she was going to go. And I was like, go, go! And like, James has given us the start. <laughs> you could have been up there still waiting for the one. Oh, I mean, just how much we could get a, a lead like that in every race. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so how... With 50 metres and not 2,000. I mean, the big question is, how does British rowing now build on the whole buzz of today? Well, we've got the foundations down, it's up to the others. Um, <laughs> so many young kids here from Project Awesome as well have come to see us and, and see us race and, and hopefully they'll take up, take up rowing now and more clubs have had, had sort of responses and, and questions about membership since we raced and, and hopefully some of those will pay off. I, was, uh, I heard from one guy that congratulated us, there's Jürgen just coming, come in Jürgen. One guy. Jürgen yeah, Goblet, the coach. Congratulations. Congratulations. Magic of making it at last. <laughs> <laughs> Yet another victory to celebrate. They <laughs> 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 yeah, came up from Durham University. They have had a thousand people that came to the swimming test to make to see if they can make the rowing team. Oh, a thousand wow. people at Durham University. That's that's what the sport's going yeah. through at the moment. Yeah. It's got a wonderful foundation to build on, hasn't it, Jürgen? Uh, brilliant. I think really outstanding. I feel <laughs> very happy for all the people coming down here and see the big big fellows yeah. from the country. Uh, brilliant. Steve, I think you're going to address a few words to the crowd. Now, there is one other question I've got to ask you, and I'm going to try and think how to phrase it. Do you feel that now you're uh, what, approaching your peak? Oh, I think I'm getting there. Maybe one or two more races, and I think I'll be at my best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I'll give that one a miss. <laughs> but definitely no announcements today. Maybe a few months, you, you'd have sorted out what the future holds. Yeah, it's uh, time to relax and enjoy it all now. And thanks for, for covering the day. It's been made it very special for us. For everyone down here, it's been really good. So thank you very much. We'll go off and celebrate. Another great day. Another great day for British rowing. Well done, fellas, and ladies as well. <laughs>